So for those of you who have been around the channel for a brief period of time, you know, the past like month or two, then you've probably seen, or I would hope have seen the video I uploaded a uh, like a few weeks ago or so, like around maybe a month ago, um, reviewing the new NAS that I got, which was the Zyxl 2 bay NAS. It was a fantastic budget uh, NAS solution, basically, that if you, if you needed to get some nice network attached storage, but you didn't have a ton of money to spend on it, then that was, uh, basically a fantastic option, at least that's the conclusion that I came to at the end of that video. Now unfortunately, in the whole process of reorganizing this room and cleaning everything and stuff like that, it seems like that thing has uh, stopped functioning properly. At least that's the conclusion that I had jumped to as of uh, yesterday when I was trying to set back up the NAS and I was like, hey, what the heck's going on? It's not starting up. So basically the issue that I ran into yesterday when I tried to start the NAS back up and everything was that as soon as I plugged in the power cord, the power light just immediately like started flashing very weakly. And initially I thought this had to do with the NAS itself being dead, like something had shorted or, you know, basically just any number of things could have happened that caused the NAS to die. And that's initially what I thought the case was, but it turns out that might not actually be it. So when I initially ran into that issue, my first thought was, oh crap, I just gave this thing a glowing review and it's dead within a month. So upon further investigation and after reading some forum posts and stuff like that, and as well as posting on Zyxl's actual forums, the first thing that a lot of people suggested was that, oh, maybe it's the power brick. Are you using the right power adapter? Since it does use like a form factor, or like the plug is the size of a lot of other power adapters. So you could in theory accidentally put the wrong power adapter into the back of the NAS and then it doesn't have enough power to spin up the drive, which was possible considering the fact that without the drive inside the NAS, the thing would turn on and I could get into the web interface and everything. It would just tell me like, hey, there's no drive in here. What are you doing with your life? So after confirming that I was in fact using the correct five amp power adapter, I tried popping the drive back in just to see maybe it was a fluke. Maybe now that I've gotten it booted up once into the web OS, it'll run fine. But unfortunately, as all things in life, that did not go as planned either. So I was greeted with the exact same flickering power button as before, you know, not really all that surprising, all things considered, typically just plugging it, unplugging it, and it, plugging it back in is not gonna make that much of a difference, especially if there's a hardware failure. So of course, the next thing you gotta, you gotta try and figure out, okay, clearly the NAS itself is not dead, but what about the drive? So I went and popped this bad boy, which is a, a Seagate Iron Wolf 2 terabyte drive. It's, it's supposed to be good for 24 seven use and something like 180 terabytes of uh, read write per year. So it's supposed to be really, really good. It's also got a three year limited warranty on it. So, you know, if all else fails, I could just RMA it. So I went over and I popped this thing uh, into my Hackintosh just to see if it would even be detected in the BIOS, you know, cause like if the drive spins up when it's plugged in there, then we can basically jump back to troubleshooting the NAS itself. Perhaps some sort of firmware issue or the power brick was faulty or something along those lines. There's a whole host of things that could have been wrong with the NAS, but of course, like I've been alluding to, there's nothing wrong with the NAS. So of course, the thing with the biggest warranty, the best warranty supposedly rated for these kinds of conditions is the thing that dies. And unfortunately, since I hadn't gotten to the point yet where I'd set up like a, a RAID 1 setup where I would just have redundancy, so in case something like this happens, I hadn't quite gotten to that point yet, so this drive is dead. and. All of the data that I had initially had just stored on my gaming PC, which used to double as my editing PC, is uh, either on this drive and I can't access it or it's gone. I'm not entirely sure if it's going to be recoverable. I'm, I'm in contact right now with uh, Seagate, basically their like warranty team or whatever you want to call them, to see if it's possible for me to get this, uh, to send this into them, have them transfer the data to another drive and then send it back to me. So I'm still waiting to hear back to see if that's possible or if this really is even covered under their warranty. Hopefully that's the case because I would really rather not lose all of the work that I have on here because I have quite a bit of information on this because I hadn't backed it up quite yet because I thought I would have time to do that and afford a second drive to do raid one with this NAS. But unfortunately, it's uh, kind of kicked the bucket already, which is 
Really disappointing, honestly. At this point, I mean, I already don't buy uh, OCZ SSDs because I had one die in such a short period of time, and typically I've always stuck to Western Digital hard drives because I've never had an issue with them. In fact, my first computer had a WD Black drive in there, a little one terabyte 7200 RPM WD Black hard drive in there, and that thing has been going for like probably seven years now and has shown no signs of faulting or dying or anything. But regardless, ending that rant, I chose this because it was reasonably priced, had a decent warranty, and as well had some fantastic ratings for the use case that I was going to be having it in, but unfortunately, seems like it's dead. Anyways guys, that's pretty much just going to wrap it up for this video. I'll keep you guys posted on what's going on with this, and then hopefully we can get this NAS back up and running, and of course I'm kind of without all the assets that I had stored on here until I either get them recovered from here or have to rebuild all of them, depending on if this drive is actually recoverable or not. But as I said, I'll keep you guys posted, and then we'll see where things go from there. Anyways guys, hopefully this video was somewhat enjoyable. I don't know how it could have been because it's just me saying my NAS doesn't work anymore and I lost all my data for the time being. So yeah. Anyways guys, if you like this video, slap a like on it. If you're new here somehow, be sure to subscribe for more tech related content and discussions and occasionally some tech related vlogs and stuff like that. And as always, have a fantastic day. See you in the next one.